Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Team Toyota of Princeton to check out Toyota's all new 2024 Grand Highlander. This is the limited trim hybrid max engine, the most powerful hybrid engine you can get in a Grand Highlander. We're gonna check this out, see what the Toyota has done here for the 2024 Grand Highlander, see what it's bringing to the table. So let's dig in front end of this Grand Highlander for 2024 Celestial Server looking good against this dark charcoal gray grill. This is not black. It's a gloss charcoal gray. Looks good. Toyota badge in the middle. We got LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, LED turn signals, LED fog lamps. And down below, we have this more nice silver trim down here. We do have some fake vent designs. Could have been a side air curtain. Let me know what you think. But overall, I think it's a really good looking front end here on this Grand Highlander. Wheel and tire set up on the Grand Highlander. We have a 20 inch gloss black and silver wheel standard brake and rotor package. These 20 inch wheels are wrapped in Continental cross contact all season tires. 255 on the width, a 55 series side wall, 20s, all four corners four-wheel drive. All right, the full side profile of the Grand Highlander. Now, dimension-wise, we're six and a half inches longer, two and a half inches wider than the standard Highlander. So that's how it breaks out. You're going to get more interior space for the front occupants, mid-row occupants, rear-row occupants, and cargo room. We're going to go over the cargo room numbers as we move around the vehicle. I do like how it looks. It looks just like a Highlander, except it's a little bit bigger. I think this Celestial Silver is a real nice color on it. It does have the gloss black, or excuse me, flat black plastic around the wheel wells and around the bottom of the doors. Let me know what you think about that. But overall, I think it's a pretty nice looking vehicle. As we move in closer, we are color matched on the side view mirror with LED turn signals and 360 degree cameras. We are color matched on the front and rear door handle, left side fuel filler cap. Up top, we are color matched. We do have chrome uh, roof rails with shark fin antenna and a panoramic roof. All right, the rear end of our Grand Highlander, roof spoiler coming off the top. We have the window wiper down below on the glass, Toyota badge in the middle, Grand Highlander. Spelled out underneath that, LED taillights, LED turn signals, hybrid max on the left, limited on the right, flat black around the bumper area with some brushed aluminum trim down below in between the functional dual exhaust. All right, we're under the hood of this 2024 Grand Highlander. And what are we looking at for a power plant? We have a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder hybrid max engine mated to a six speed automatic transmission, 362 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque. This Grand Highlander can tow up to 5,000 pounds, MPGs 26 in the city, 27 on the highway, 27 combined, the engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. All right, before we get into the interior, you're going to want to know, Mike, how much does this Grand Highlander Hybrid Max cost? It can't be cheap, and no, it is not. These are expensive vehicles, so let's see what this one's got. Now, the base price for the Grand Highlander Limited four-wheel drive Hybrid Max before options is $54,040. This particular one has some options. We have to add in 600 bucks for the panoramic view camera. We have to add in an additional 1,350 for the panoramic moonroof. We have to add in another 358 for the all weather floor liners and cargo tray. We have to add in another 155 for the door edge guards. We then have to add in a destination and delivery fee of $1,335 from Toyota's Princeton, Indiana assembly plant. And we have a total MSRP from the factory of $57,838. Let's check out the interior. All right, starting with the footbox, a nice large dead pedal brake and accelerator. The floor mats are in the cargo area at this time. Love the door sill plate. It says Grand Highlander, the welcome to you, the welcome you to the car. That's a nice touch here on this limited trim seats. Power seats with lumbar for the driver and front passenger. Then we have black leather interior with the stitching with some copper 
as well, and a microfiber suede insert into the seats. Really nice looking, nice bolstering, nice and soft, feels really good. Good looking interior. Grand Highlander door panels. We have soft touch up top. We have some really nice carbon fiber. I believe it's carbon fiber effect inserts here in the door. It doesn't tell me on the window sticker what material this is, but considering the price point, I'm going to assume this is carbon fiber effect. Could be real carbon fiber, but it feels really good to the touch as well. We have our uh, chrome door handles, flat back on black on the switch gear, a nice soft armrest. We got that upgraded JBL sound system in here as well. Good looking door panels. Dashboard, soft touch with the stitching, more of this carbon fiber. Effect. We have a nice area here for storage right here. We have a USB-C over on the passenger side. That's a good idea so they don't have to reach over to plug in. USB-C action, love that. Heat and air vent on that. And then we have our glove box down below and it's nice and large. Infotainment system, we have Toyota's 12.3 inch infotainment screen, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. The navigation in here is via subscription only that you have to pay for. So for me, I would probably just use the navigation through my phone. We have music, Sirius XM and all your stations, Bluetooth in your phone, vehicle settings, just like we've seen on the other Toyota products. It's the same system, nice and easy to the touch. We look at our backup camera here, There it is, nice and clear, with trajectory, with 360, beautiful camera, really like it, and you can switch your camera views as well, so it is a really nice backup camera in this Grand Highlander. Down below, dual climate control action, which is a nice touch, and your heated and ventilated seats is tied into your climate control, so if you have your air on when you get in the car, the ventilated seats will be on as well, and vice versa in the winter, so that's a nice touch, but here they are up here, three stage for the driver, and three stage for the front passenger. So that's a really nice touch. We also have our windshield wiper de-icer right here, which is also really nice. And you can sync these together and you can start up the rear climate control as, as well and sync it together with the front. We have two heat and air vents, four way hazards down below here. Here's your engine start button or power button, camera views, USB-C, USB-C, wireless charging, here is the gear shift to go through the six-speed automatic transmission. Love the copper look to it as well. Really, really nice. Large area here for storage. And then two cup holders right there. And then here's the Toyota key fob. And again, I wish they were just were nicer. Lock, unlock, pop the tailgate, panic button, Toyota emblem. And on the back, it says Grand Highlander. Down here... We have more of this copper color on the, uh, the trim, which is really, really nice. We have our traction control off. We have our uh, drive modes right here, which we'll show you when we go through the dash. And then we have our snow mode. And a lot of these are buttons rather than on a dial. And then we have hill descent control over here. And then we have a nice large armrest, a little firm with the stitching. Open this up. And inside, we have a nice area for storage and 12 volt action. Steering wheel, really loving the steering wheel. Nice leather wrap, nice 10 and two notches, more of this copper trim around the steering wheel to lift it up, Toyota badge in the middle. Round bottom steering wheel, but I got plenty of room to get in and out. Telephone voice commands on the left with the controls for your digital dash on the left and on the right here, adaptive cruise control, safety suite controls and the modes for your infotainment system. We do have paddles right here if you want to shift manually. And then we have our headlights and fog lamps. And on the right front and rear wiper over here, you got your adaptive high beams, heated steering wheel. Turn on that 120 volt AC in the back. And we have uh, popped the tailgate. And up top here, brighten dim the dash and your trip odometer, manual tilting steering wheel. And then here we go. We have the, there we go, get rid of that fuel low thing. And the fuel is low. Here is the digital dash looking good. Everything digital. Instead of attack, we have that EV driving ratio uh, screen as well, which looks nice. And then in the middle, of course, you're going to have more uh, settings we can set up. Hang on, let me change the settings here. 
and then we can just go through additional information that you may want to see on the screen while you're driving. So nice and simple, nice and easy, but this car just came in, so some of this stuff is still needs to be configured, but it is quite nice. Now, our drive modes, we have mud and sand, rock and dirt, and then you push for normal, that is the dial. Now the actual buttons, we have eco, we can then go to sport, and that's going to turn the engine on all the time, then we can go to snow, and that just pops a little light green light on that says snow. So that is the deal there, but it's a really nice and easy digital dash to look at. Overhead console, spot for your shades, LED lighting, you want the LED lighting to come on and off when you open and close the door. Well, you know what? That car door button is going to be on the off side right here and remain off. And then when you open the door, LED lighting comes on, close the door, LED lighting goes off. Here are the controls for your panoramic roof. Shade on the left. So you hit that once and hold it in a second, and the shade will go all the way back over the mid-row passengers. And then you can open up the roof on the other side. One click and it opens. There's your wind buffeter up there. And then it'll go back about that far. You want to close it. And there you go. You're closed again. And then you hit it again to close that tilt off. And then push it and hold it a second. And you'll get that shade to come all the way back across in one fell swoop. Nice and quick, too. Doesn't make you wait all day. So that's nice. Sun visor with vanity and a light. Does it slide to block out the side sun? Yes, it does. Driver door panel. We have two memory seat settings for the driver, which is nice. And with this button up here on the left, we have the power fold mirrors, as you would expect in a vehicle of this quality. Nice job, Toyota. Mid-row time. I have the seat set for my driving position, so we'll just hop on in. Nice and easy to get in. No problem. Enough room. Now, this seat is way up. There's been a lot of people in and out of this car because the dealer just got this. So I'll move it back a little bit into its normal spot. Now i got plenty of knee room. Plenty of headroom at 5 foot 11, plenty of shoulder width room, captain's chairs in the mid row, leather all the way down, seat pocket behind the driver and front passenger. And then this action back here, we have uh, climate control for the rear pa passengers as well as three stage heated seats for both captain's chairs. That's a nice touch. And then two USB C's on either side. And then down below, a home power source. So they got you covered there. Door panels in the back, same as the front. Nice look, except we're missing that carbon fiber. Look around and above the door handle. But overall, it is a nice looking door panel, armrest fairly soft. And you got a cup holder right there in the armrest. And then we also have our security shades. So they got you covered there. Armrests for these captain's chairs. A little skinny, but they don't ratchet. So I like this quite a bit. And then we have, again, the leather with the copper, with the microfiber suede inserts looking really nice in the captain's chairs and then down below you have an area here from two more cup holders some more places to stick your cell phone get it out of the way while you're charging it up so they really got you covered here in the mid row and it really feels good back here in this grand highlander all right getting in the third row pretty simple here's the button right here you pull this up the seat moves forward and now you got plenty of room to step in and get into this third row of the Highlander and in the third row. Knees are a little high. Room isn't going to be too bad, but what I like back here is you got two cup holders. You have a USB-C for connectivity on both sides, and you got your LED lighting, and you got a heat vent back here as well. So that's a nice touch. like how that is. And to give you an idea on knee room, I'm going to slide over back here. And again, I'm a little bit cramped back here, just a tad bit, but not too bad. I could sit back here for a while, but not on a long trip. So I would say smaller adults and children would fit perfectly back here. And you got your connectivity, you got your heat and air, and you got your cup holders. So you're all set in row number three. And thank you, Toyota, for putting in this connectivity in row three in the Grand Highlander. All right, getting into the, uh, the uh, cargo area, just come to the back. Again, pop it from the key fob or from the dash, or come to the back, hit the button underneath the Highlander name, up it comes, nice electric assist on the way up, nice electric assist on the way down. Here are the carpeted floor mats, still boxed up. 
here in this Grand Highlander. We'll stand those up. You got the all season mats as well. And then underneath here, we got more area for storage and a jack, which means if we got the jack, that means we got the spare and the spare. Oh, there's the muffler if you want to take a look at that. <laughs> the spare is deeper underneath here, but I don't have the time to open all that up. But it is there. We do have a home power source in the cargo area, which is nice. Subwoofer for the JBL sound system looking good. So a nice area back here for storage. Now to get row number three down here in the Grand Highlander, you just pop, put, pop the button up like that, push it on down, pop the button up like that, and push it on down. And now you got more space for those larger items with the third row down. I think most people are going to rock with the third row down. Let me know. You go in, you, do you rock third row up or third row down? But they haven't given me a lever back here to drop the mid row from the tailgate area like I've asked for. Come on, Toyota. This is 2024. Tell your ride, Palisade, to name a few, drop the mid row from the tail, uh, tailgate area. We need to do that here in the Highlander and the Grand Highlander. We still have the old fashioned mechanism to get the mid row down. And I'll be back with you shortly and I'll show you how that works. All right, here we go to get the mid row down as a two handed operation. We have two buttons here. We have button number one, button number two. Button number one lets you slide the mid row captain's chairs back and forth, and that's nice. Button number number two is going to help you get the mid row seat flat. How, but it's a two handed operation because you have to have one hand here pulling this open, another hand on that button I showed you earlier to get into the third row on top of the seat, pull them together. Here it is right here, and then you got to let them down. Now, of course, the headrest has popped up. Let me put that down. We'll hit it, we'll hit it, and down it goes. Again, it's going to hit the front seat if the front seat is angled back too far. So you got to have to worry about that. But that's how that's going to work. Two-handed operation, one here and one there to get them flat. I'm going to do the other side off camera, and then I'll meet you at the back of the car. Now, once you get all the seats down, you have much more space for those really large items in the back of this Grand Highlander. And of course, you're gonna have much more storage space in the Grand Highlander opposed to the Highlander. And you're gonna say, Mike, but you haven't told me how much bigger this is. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now. With all seats up, Grand Highlander, 20.6 cubic feet of cargo space. That's 4.6 cubic feet larger than the standard Highlander. With all seats down, Grand Highlander, 97.5 cubic feet of space. That's 13.2 cubic feet of space more than a regular Highlander. All right, here's the window sticker right here. I put this car in the sun so we could see, but boy, is it a hot one out here today. Fuel economy. Standard equipment. And of course, feel free to pause and zoom in. Check all this out. Options. Total MSRP. Let's take her out for a spin. All right, we are going down the road in this 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Limited Hybrid Max. And I, you know what? I love this Hybrid Max engine. 362 on the horses, 400 on the torque. Really gets this thing up and moving really, really well. It's got a nice sound to it when you punch it. Now, we can't stand on it because this is a brand new engine. And so we're going to feather in the gas, take it easy on this thing today. Plus, I don't have a lot of gas in here either. So we're going to have a limited drive, but that's the way it's going right now. Everybody wants to get their hands on this 2024 Grand Highlander back at the dealership. Holy mackerel. Great visibility out the front glass, side view mirror, uh, side glass, rear glass, no problem. Blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, all that jazz is in this Grand Highlander. Looking good. Love the, all the tech you got in here, right? I mean, you have the bigger screen, heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, wireless charging. Uh, you got heated seats in the mid row. You have connectivity with USB-C action all over the vehicle, including row number three. The only thing I wish they improved upon was the mechanism to drop the mid-row down if you want to stick a lot of cargo in the back. 
Uh, it's still the old-fashioned two-handed le uh, pull lever approach at the same time to get the seats down. And I really wish they would just go simple and just get a lever in the back of the cargo area and let you pull it and drop the seats like Kia and Hyundai do with the Telluride and Palisade. I don't understand why they didn't do that. It seemed, it, to me, it seems like an easy fix. Let me know what you guys think. But otherwise, uh, and that's not a deal breaker for me in buying a car. I just would like a little bit more convenience. But this thing rides smoothly. It's got a really nice uh, uh, feel to the suspension, the way they have it set up and damped. The steering isn't crazy. You know, you get a little feedback through the wheel, just a touch. It's a, a little bit light, but it's very direct. So they really have the uh, the handling set up well in this Grand Highlander. You're getting a vehicle two and a half inches wider, six and a half inches longer than a regular Highlander. And you're getting the all new Hybrid Max technology with the six speed automatic and not a CVT. Every regular Highlander's, uh, uh, Every regular Highlander's uh, hybrid setup is with a CVT transmission. This one, you go Hybrid Max, you get the six-speed auto, just like the Crown Hybrid Max. And I think that's a good move, especially when you're going to charge $57,000 for a vehicle like this. But the upside is it's twenty grand cheaper than a Sequoia. Now, it isn't as big as a Sequoia. But it's a lot of money, a lot money less. And I think that's where Toyota's trying to fit this in. Somebody who needs more room than a regular Highlander, but they can't afford to go Sequoia. This is a nice in-between vehicle, and, it, and I think it's going to work really, really well. So we're going to do an emergency stop here in three, two, one. Throws out the anchors, stops on a dime. Look at the way those the the cameras come on thinking there might have been something in front of you showing you the road in front of you i don't know if you can see that on the camera but it's really really well done in here uh as far as the technology goes in this vehicle they really did a nice job and i really like how this thing feels it the build quality here second to none it feels great there's no creaks or rattles or undo vibrations coming through the chassis. Toyota just really knows how to build a good solid vehicle and they've done so with this Grand Highlander. All right we're gonna come up here we're going to do is a, a little speed test again I'm, I'm gonna feather this in I'm not standing on it brand new engine we don't want this to shift more than 4,000 rpm so here we go in three two one Look how smooth that is and we're up to 60 easily no problem really smooth on the pull out of this hybrid max you don't have to wait for any turbos to kick in it just boom off it goes no problem great linear torque delivery out of a hybrid engine the best I've seen so far and the six-speed auto is as smooth as glass you know this is not gonna handle like a corner carver it is softer on the suspension it's going to wallow in the turns a bit like we'll see here but overall really well put together vehicle really well put together car and uh i'm really pleased with it and um they've done a real nice job and i think I initially thought when I saw this, hey, this might be a bit unnecessary. You know, the Highlander's big enough, but I can understand where they're coming from with this vehicle. Let's get somebody into a vehicle that needs more room than a Highlander, but can't afford a ginormous Sequoia, nor does it, they need a full size, so we're going to go in between. And I think that was a great move. And, uh, it's a really, really good, great vehicle. If you're in the market for a regular Highlander, I'd check out the Grand Highlander as well. You're gonna spend a few thousand dollars more, but the technology in the 2024 Grand Highlander is gonna be much better than the 2023 regular Highlander. And so I definitely put this on my list to test drive if you're looking for a three row midsize SUV, midsize plus SUV, I would say. But it's a great vehicle i'm really enjoying it and if i were in the highlander market i'd be looking at one of these instead of the regular one but you know what 
Let me know what you guys think. What do you think about this Grand Highlander? How do you like it? What are your pluses? What are your cons? Would you spend 57 G's on this Limited Hybrid Max? Or are you going to go down trim a little bit and get something a little less expensive? Let me know what you think in the comments. But I'd like to thank Team Toyota of Princeton for allowing the channel access to this 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Limited Hybrid Max for review today. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.